This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and so glad you guys are with me today. I was thinking just the other day how long Identity Network has been going on. You know, I've been in ministry for probably about, let's say, 30, 30 something years, and loved every moment of my life. It's been the best life, I guess, a person could dream or ask for. And, uh, I was thinking about Identity Network, and it's been going since the year 2000, and we have seen some tremendous miracles. We've seen over 300 and something thousand subscribers uh, so far. Uh, we've seen hundreds on our Book of the Month Club. We've seen a lot of things, you know, just grow, evolve, and metamorphosize. And I'm so thrilled and honored to be that person that God has chosen to be with you guys today on your journey to see what God is doing in your life as well. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed the journey with me so far, and I'm looking forward to even greater things in the future. We're going to have a great future together, folks. We really are. So let me say this. Uh, as you guys know, here in September, I've just launched out my brand new book, which is called Power of the Law of Manifestation. Power of the Law of Manifestation. Now, we have hundreds of people on our Book of the Month program, so I know all of you guys should have already gotten it. Yeah, if you don't, you should be getting it any day now. And I know many of you have gotten your copy and have... Uh, emailed our customer service and told me how you have really just jumped in, you've dived in, you're really enjoying the book, and you want more. Well, I have good news for you. We have sold so many of those books, even outside of our Book of the Month program, that we actually um going to have a follow-up to it. I've been working on a follow-up that's going to be a deeper, sort of a more in-depth book, even to the power of the Law of Manifestation. So you guys get ready. Uh, it's going to be good. And, if, and remember this, if you don't follow us on Instagram, you need to make sure you are following us on Instagram. Uh, basically, it is at Identity Network. That's it. At Identity Network. We have about a million followers. We have, in fact, one of the largest ones actually out there of followers. So definitely be a part of that. Uh, as you guys know, we do, um, every Monday we do our a little live I do. I'll do a little teaching from the book every single Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Usually the third Wednesday of every month, I actually focus on what I call our prophetic live night event, where either I will speak prophetically into people's lives, or we do interviews. And I'm excited because we finally have this month, we have her locked in, and I am thrilled. I could be more excited than anything because I've got a, a new friend of mine coming up uh, that I'm really getting to know, and she is phenomenal, and that is um, Pastor um, Kim Jones, and you might know her from the TV show Pastors of Atlanta that came out years ago. She is a worldwide worldwide um, international speaker. She's got a mega church. Uh, her, in fact, her, her uh, podcast is called Real Life Talk, uh, and it's, uh, it is amazing. Excuse me, Real Talk Kim, and she is just phenomenal, one of the best out there. We have have confirmed her. She is definitely going to be with us this month, okay, for the month of September, and that will fall on September 18th at 6 p.m. Central Time. September 18th, 6 p.m. Central Time. So you guys want to make sure you are definitely following me on Instagram. Once again, it is at Identity Network, all one word. And when you do, you'll get notifications and when I'm going live. And you definitely want to want to stay tuned. Please tell all your friends. We always tell people, let's grow this thing. You know, the more uh, growth and the more people we're getting on board uh, with our live events, uh, usually the third Wednesday of every month, then we will get uh, bigger names as well, and we'll get people that you want to hear. And so I'm looking forward to this. Now, this is one that you guys will definitely like. You will love her. Now then, let's get into this podcast today for this week. We're going to talk a little bit about a subject that I feel is really near and dear in my heart, because I've seen people recently who've really gone through a lot of discouragement. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of steps 
uh, how to overcome discouragement. Steps to, we'll, we'll put it this way, steps to seriously overcome discouragement, all right? Now, the first step I want to sort of share with you guys today is number one. I could sit here and say to you, have faith. That's true. But faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, according to Hebrews 11.1. 1. And what that means is you have to call into existence. The scriptures make it plain that faith is something that does not exist in the natural, but you have to believe that it that faith is the substance that is going to manifest the very thing you're believing God for. Why? Because the Bible says no good thing will he withhold from you. If the Bible says that no good thing will God withhold from you, that means all good things, like the Bible says, flow down from the Father of lights. And in him there's no shadow of turning. And what that means is God says, I'm not going to change and turn my ways from not constantly flowing down good things to you. Good things that are in the will of God for you directly that you need, I'm not going to stop flowing those into your life. Why? Because God loves you. And God loves a cheerful giver. So I always recommend to people to continue to give to the things of the Lord. Give your time, your energy, your money, your effort. You know, make sacrifices in the sense of knowing that you've got to maybe feed the poor. You know, clothe those. Because if you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto him. So you've got a lot going on here that God is saying, I want to flow good things to you. You know, I want to make sure you're a giver. I want to make sure you're, you know, you're, you're walking in my feet here on planet Earth to be able to clothe people, feed people, and take care of them. Right? But on this amazing journey of God flowing down good things, we gotta have faith to be able to understand that God's good things will never stop flowing to us. And even sometimes the good things that flow down to us that we look at and we say, man, I'm not getting anything going on today. It doesn't mean God is not flowing down good things to you. It means that God is flowing down good things to you. You just don't have an eye to see it. Because sometimes we're used to the good things meaning material things. The good things meaning money things. No, sometimes the good things are God's giving you a burst of joy, a burst of laughter. Maybe God is giving you today good things of peace and you need to begin to acclimate to that peace. In other words, get accustomed and get used to the peace. You know, when you put a fish, when you take a fish out of the water and you put them into a new climate of water, you've got to acclimate them. Put them in a bag of water that they're used to and then you sit it down in the water. I know this because I have a pond of some of the largest koi fish in my state. Uh, and so you put them down to the water. When you do, you give a couple of minutes. You wait because the water within the bag starts turning the temperature of the water in the pond. And the fish, the fish's body slowly adapts to that versus just throwing the fish in the water and pretty much giving it a heart attack because it's, it's coming from one extreme temperature into another maybe extreme temperature. So you've got to acclimate the fish into the pond and to the lake or whatever it is you're putting into even with it within a tank in your house you do that why because you've got to begin sometimes to begin to understand that God will acclimate you okay and it's got to acclimate you sometimes you won't tell the temperature of the water because it's slowly evolving in you right now and when it slowly evolves in you you're not going to really say wow wow there's like this big burst of joy because God acclimates you to that slowly so God doesn't fast fast uh, you know very fast and and, and just forcefully throw you into it. And so sometimes acclimation, which is powerful, can also be something that we've got to have an ear to hear and an eye to see to understand. Because sometimes when you acclimate something, it doesn't understand or know that it's actually being acclimated because its body is slowly adapting to it. Versus if you're in a car wreck, God forbid, you know, your body's going to go into shock because nothing acclimated you, right, into a wreck. You didn't slowly, you know, the film or real life real didn't slowly just slow down for you to where you can see the car coming and you're and, and you're in like this you know slow real time here and you slow to like okay let's sit here I, I notice I'm slowly heading for this wreck and I gotta prepare myself I mean not that you really can but let's just face it you would be in the major shock factor if we could slow life down like we slow down a you know um TV right and and cause it to go slow and so God will acclimate you to a new adapt adaptation of peace or certain things within your life and when he does that a lot of times you might not recognize that he's still flowing down good things to you but yet but yet he is.
And so with having an ear to hear and an eye to see, your faith can begin to say, you know what? I know that God's good. I know that I'm calling things into existence. But God is also acclimating me to his peace, to understand the new things. God is acclimating me to a new level of joy, a new level of happiness. Not everything in your life, folks, is going to come microwavable or you're going to have this amazing burst burst just hit you all of a sudden. That's not how life works. Life works when you begin to understand God will acclimate you to something slowly and that adaptation part of it you need to be able to say wait a minute i need to sit still in my faith and pay attention to the fact that something possibly could be going on inside of me deeper that i'm not aware of so discouragement sometimes can come in and we might think well nothing good's going on around me i don't get i'm not getting anything new in my life you know i didn't get that job i wanted didn't get the new car i wanted or didn't maybe uh feel like you know my friend walked out of my life or i feel you know down this week because there's no activity going on. Maybe God is doing some activity inside of you. So you've got to begin to have faith and believe that just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Because really, in reality, it's still there. It is there more than the things you see in your natural eye. Did you know that? The spirit realm is more real than this natural materialistic world. If you think about everything in the universe being energy and here on, on you know, it's slowed down into matter, then we are matter beings. We're energy beings slowed down into matter, according to science. And what that means is that the material that we are is actually more or less energy slow down. And so if you see it from that point of view, you know, you might say, well, everything is real. That door is real. You know, the, the table is real. You know, I know that because I stump my toe on it or I have to turn the knob of the door to open up. And you would be correct in saying it's real. However, you would never stop to think that door is actually more energy than anything. And so if you think about it, then even the spirit realm that goes beyond energy is more real than the natural. So when God says, you call those things that be not as though it exists, that's what the scripture says. And when the scripture says, faith says that faith is the substance of things you're hoping for, the evidence of things not seen. See, God wants you to hope. God doesn't have a problem with you hoping for something you know new or different in your life. That's not being selfish. The Bible tells you that's what you need to do. Because it shows the character of God in you in the sense of God's strength and God's power. Okay, When we say character, not so much character like personality and how you treat people, but the character or the nature of God is to create. And so when we see things and we, we know it's more real in the spirit realm and we call it into the natural realm because that is more real than the natural realm, then we realize that's what God wants us to do. And so God is initiating sometimes God's peace with inside of us that maybe the natural outside of us doesn't feel, doesn't see, doesn't sense, but it's actually more real than it is the things, than things around us. So if you want to overcome come discouragement, you've got to believe, number one, i got to have faith to know that God is doing something deeper. And what he's doing in me deeper is far more important and far more real than the things that I feel like maybe is not going on around me. Another thing about discouragement is this. Not only having faith, but discouragement also overcoming it also lets you know know your strengths in other words know your background know exactly the things in your life that you know that you've already accomplished you've already been successful at you've already recognized the ability you know of the intelligence that you've had through other situations overcoming them or maybe figuring things out or getting solutions for them those are major victories folks and just because you're at a stump and you feel as if you know well nothing's going on right now i feel so down i feel so you know discouraged Remember what David did in, in, in the Bible. The Bible says when David was, was at his lowest point, the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, a lot of you that don't know Hebrew and Greek and a little bit of Aramaic, let me explain to you what that means in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew language, encouragement means literally this. It means David put himself back together, he repaired himself, and basically, the Bible mentions how he prophesied to himself. And what that means is he had to sit here and say, David, get up. This is not you. I got to get up. I got things to do. I got to begin to start living life again. So when he encouraged himself, it literally means he repaired himself, picked himself back up, and prophesied back to himself.
And sometimes you've got to begin to speak to yourself and just basically when we, say, when we say prophesy, prophesy the things in your life that you know God said you're going to do in your life. God said I'm going to be able to one day have my own business. God said I'm going to have, he's going to bless my family. God said I'm going, to, I'm going to do great things because the Bible makes it plain that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. And so you know what? I'm encouraging myself. I'm letting myself know that this moment will eventually pass. And this discouragement I'm feeling right now, it's going to go away very soon. But it's going to go away sooner when I begin to acknowledge the power and the presence of this is just a temporal thing, but it's also not even a real thing. Because what I don't have in the natural or what I don't sense around me is, is happening, really the, the truth is there's more things in the spirit realm around me that, is, that has more energy, more action, more things happening inside of me than what I can't see on the outside happening. And so it's time to begin to get happy again because things are going on inside of you that you're not aware of and you're realizing that your past holds a lot of powerful things anyway that you've already accomplished and you've already had the ability of, of that intelligence, that wisdom to be able to overcome so many things already. So guess what? This too will pass. This too will pass. Another thing I want you to do is remember the, the Lord, that the Lord has good plans for you. Remember the Lord has good plans for you. Which means the Bible says that God, um, it talks about a hope and a bright future. God wants to give you hope and a bright future. The Bible says you are the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. And what that means is God says you don't have to be beneath things. You can be above it. You're a victor. You're a, you know, the Bible says that, you know, you are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. And sometimes, you know, even like sometimes when I go to church, I hear sometimes, you know, um, I love my church dearly, but sometimes it focuses on, have you had a rough week? Have you been through a lot? Have you, in a, uh, you know, come drink of the water mentality? And I'm like, no, I want to hear messages to say you, who, who I am. You're more than a conqueror, Jeremy. You know, uh, God's given you peace that surpasses your understanding. You know, you're the, you know, you are, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives you strength. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. These are Bible scriptures because I want to know who I am. If I want to overcome something, they give me the opposite of that. Don't sit here and tell me, oh, I know it's been bad for you. Let me pray for you. No, tell me what I am. Tell me who I am in Christ, but also tell me what's going on around me and how God's got good plans for me going on. That's more important to me than anything. You tell me what God says about me. Don't get on my level and say, I'm so sorry you've had a rough week. No. Instill in me who I am and what's going on around me, really, because that's more important to me. If you want to change your life, you don't, you don't, you don't wallow in the, the situation you're in. You speak of the opposite of that to get you out of it. When you're in a, when you're in a hole, nobody gets down in the hole with you and says, I'm so sorry you're in this hole. No, they reach down a ladder, a rope, or something to say, let me help you get out of this. Grab a hold of it and I'll pull you up. I'll pull you out. That's the key thing. So tell me who I am. Don't, t don't get down where I am right now. Tell me what's going on. That's the powerful you know, message that you need, we need to be hearing. And so these are some things today to help you through your discouragement, to let you understand that, you know what, this too shall pass. And you've got to remember who you are. You're a king and you're a lord and you're a priest and you're powerful. And you're more than a conqueror. So take with those, those names today and know that God has already said who you are. And don't let your, your, your situations define you because their definitions are not real. What's real is what God says about you. So I want to close with this today. And I want to thank you for being a part of our podcast and our ministry that's international. I want to close with this today with you. And, and I'll say it like I always do. If you don't like your day, I have great news for you. You can change your day by changing your thoughts. If you change your thoughts of how you see yourself, how you see your day, your day will bow to those new realities of what you're thinking. And your day will begin to shift to say, you know what? He wants to be joyful because this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. When your day goes bad, start rejoicing. How do you do that? You change your thoughts and you'll change your life. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.